Hello everybody, John here, and today onto the garage, I'm going to go collect Purdy, the XK8, from the body shop. Ooh, exciting, scary, and expensive. Hi everyone, well today we're going to have a look at what Purdy's turned out like coming back from the body shop but I'd like to start off by saying that this particular episode we're doing a bit of an experiment and that is I'm asking you if you're watching this on the premiere and you've got a question which you feel has not been answered about your XKA XKR then please consider typing a question into the chat which is generally on the right hand side of the screen if you're watching a premiere and it's a text-based chat area where normally we just to and fro between myself watching the premiere and you guys as you're watching it and what we're going to do is that chat area for this episode will just remain an area for questions to be logged which people would like answers to and please don't be afraid to put up something there that you've asked me and I've either come back with a I sorry I don't know or where I haven't come back to you with an answer put it up there because the premieres do tend to be watched by some of the more active members of the subscribership so if you feel you know the answer to a question that's been posed on the right hand side of the video in the chat area or if you're watching it back later you can click a box that says show live chat replay um, then please feel free to answer it and you can answer it by putting it in the comments area below the video thanks very much to gary van Remortel for the idea and we'll try it out and see what happens so why have you had body work done john simple answer because i'm an idiot this is purdy she is a very early 1996 xk8 convertible very early You'll note no high level boot light, uh, brake light on the back. There's various little tiny tweaks and features about of it. You notice you're working on of it are not quite right because she's still got quite a lot of pre productionness about her. Uh, her bodywork is in very good condition for a car of this age. She has been looked after, she has had a little bit of love and rework at some previous stages. She's only done, I think, 47,000 miles, something like that. So very low mileage car and I look after her. You, if you've seen any of my videos, you know I'm mad keen on the X100. And I was very aware of a couple of very small areas that needed addressing and have been for a good 12 months or more. But yeah, they didn't worry me enough. They weren't big enough issues to need any immediate response. Plus, like an awful lot of people, I've not got a relationship with a particular body shop, or hadn't. Um, personally, I'm capable of doing rattle can repairs, but certainly wouldn't go to uh, task on an A surface on my beautiful Jag. Plus, this car is in a colour called Aquamarine Mica, and it's notoriously bad for mismatches. One of the reasons this colour is not that common is Jag only really pushed it out there for the first two years, having received a lot of complaints, misguided complaints, um, from people saying, oh, the, the wing is a different colour to the boot lid or the door is a different colour to the wing. And it's just because for Jag, this is quite an extreme pearl finish meaning that different angles that the light catches it at changes the colour. And the pearl in this car is blue-green. The different panels do tend to give the impression of different colours. It also means if you touch up an area here, the chances of you laying down the paint perfectly so that it doesn't catch the light differently and, and show up 
are poor. So I'd resisted getting anything done. That changed when in a video that you guys have seen, although the actual act had to be deleted because too painful for me and the expletives were really imaginative. I managed to damage the boot lid quite badly because I was working on the car. I had the boot lid open. I did a lot of other bits and pieces around the car and then decided, oh, I must just look at something underneath. And I have a really nice strongman scissor lift, walked over my to my control panel, lifted the car and the boot lid came into hard contact with the roof rafters. To make it worse, if you've got a lift of any variety, you'll probably know this, because of the safety features on a lift, it doesn't actually hold the car on its hydraulics uh, whilst you're underneath the car, it sits the car down on a mechanical stop or rest. So in order to, to start moving again, very often the lift has to lift to come down. It takes it up and off the mechanical stops. And I just managed to lift it into contact just as a mechanical stop came into play. Meaning when I realized that I dented the boot lid, I had to lift it another centimeter in order to get it off the mechanical stops and bring the car back down. So a bad day. And the damage was here. And I'll mix in some images now. Although I've got to say, uh, I've never managed to take a good picture that showed just quite how creased the boot lid is. Just the reflections and everything else and the lighting really doesn't show up that well. And it was a hard enough impact that it actually shifted the whole boot lid and I had to realign the hinges to make the boot lid shut again. So a very upsetting moment, it had to be said. If we go over to my control panel now, you'll note the sign. I'd also got some rust appearing here on the edge of the sill just in front of the rear wheels. This side, I'd got a row of blisters top to bottom on the um, area that is covered in stone chip. The other side I had a single blister. And again, part of the reason for putting it off is I didn't have any particular contacts in the world of painting. There are lots of paint and body shops around and I'm sure most of them would have been quite brilliant but they tend to be crash damage repair, insurance work, etc. And whilst they're probably brilliant at what they do, I just didn't feel like I wanted to give it to one of those folks. I, I wanted a little bit of personal care and attention. I wanted a personality. I wanted somebody who liked Jaguars and who would actually recognize that this might be a tricky paint color and give it a little bit of care and time. So I got a recommendation, got two recommendations for the same place actually. Uh, one was from a subscriber whose name uh, eludes me. And thanks for all the other recommendations too. I had some really good ones, but this was by far the closest. For Glenn Walden, and Glenn owns GW Autos, and that is another restoration company. I went and visited him, had a great chat, and immediately I knew, yeah, this is the guy for me. Um, this is a little bit of personal attention. This is a person I like. So I uh, made arrangements to take Purdy over. And I think I had to wait about six weeks because Glenn was busy. And he had the car over there for five days. So Purdy has spent the last week with Glenn at GW Autos. Let's see how he got on. Let it go. Spend my coin for sure. I'm gonna be myself, or I could be someone else. No one's stopping me now. I'm gonna skip my breaks. I'm gonna make mistakes. I just wanna feel alive. It's just what I do when I'm out. So try not to hold me. Feel alive when I'm in this town Look at those beautiful stars I wanna drive a faster car Nothing can break me, no, no, nothing can break me Try not to hold me down Feel alive when I'm in this town Look at those beautiful stars I wanna take a trip to Mars Nothing can break me, no, no, nothing can break me Ooh. 
So we've got the car back. This is Glenn. If you've got any uh, questions about getting your bodywork sorted out, and particularly if in Lincolnshire, yeah. then uh, Glenn's your man, and I'll put some details at the bottom of the screen. And you obviously you like Jags because you've got an X1 <laughs> K120, but specialism, take anything. Yeah, anything. Yeah, they do. Quite a number of jacks. Yeah. Yeah. Do you deal with the aluminium stuff as well? Can you do aluminium bodywork, or is that yeah, something you? Oh, yeah. okay, date. So X one fifty folk, because <laughs> <laughs> that's a separate breed of people with their own issues yeah, and problems. I've done one forty. Yeah. Well, I had a rare one forty that was steel and aluminium. Yeah. Aluminium. Yeah. That was a special. Wow. It was number two hundred. Well, you had an early XK8 and you had an early 140, you've got to get the full set yeah. now. That's it, when I'd fabricated and welded it in. Obviously pretty good at the old uh, metal bashing, mate. Yeah, I've done them. I've done quite a few of them and I've done them so many different ways. Yeah. Now I try and form them in one. I know somebody's started making little bits for this area, but whether they're any good or not. What I do is actually, because it's quite a complicated shape mm. because it goes round into that point and then round again yes but you've got the you've got this bit yeah so what i do is don't fold that get the shape first mm -hmm. and then i snip these right so then i can bend it round ease it but then i v them yes yeah and then weld them yeah. Weld them back up. Because it's a deceptively complex shape, this silk. Oh, Lots of people it. don't notice, like, the little crease in it. I know it. And those that do think it's been in a crash. <laughs> and some of them's different here. Yes. On the end. Yeah. The later ones taper off to a point. Right. The earlier ones are, like, three quarters of an inch all the way around. Yeah. yeah so. That's that. Oh, this is the, the chassis leg bit. Yeah. Yeah, because I couldn't quite so, get my head around that. So I, I knock it. them back. Yes. Then I, because it's spot welded. Yeah. They just open up. Mm. So what I've done is sealed, knocked them back, sealed them all up, mm. and then um, treated them with, that was the back. What's the bumper that's, result? That's where the bumper where touches yeah. up against it, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Now, although the bolts obviously free on mine because of them yeah. locking things, did did the bumper slide straight back off? Yeah. Yeah, because yeah. I've never actually slid it back. Yeah, I've cleaned it all out. There was, there was loads of... I don't know how it gets there because it's quite well protected. Yeah. Yeah, that's all the rust treatment on it, cleaned up. Lovely. And I've left that on. Yeah. Because it doesn't like... Well, I cleaned it off on the inside. Yeah. But I left it on because it, it'll just carry on working, working. away. Yeah. Well, nobody's going to see it, so it's not... Uh... So Beautiful, mate. I just had a glance as I come in. Our biggest compliment of player is I can't tell where you've been. <laughs> <laughs> that is yeah. brilliant. And I've obviously done. I've, this side wants a bad in that wheel arch. Yeah. But I've still done it. And yeah. I've um, used an oil based um, sealant. Yes, under sealy sealed, stuff. Yeah. I've yeah. sealed it up with proper sealer. Yeah. Then I stone chipped it. <coughs> yeah. And then I. An old fashioned under seal mm. that you spray on. That looks great. Yes, yeah, so that's all done. What I've done is I lacquer the old panel all the way from here, yeah, all the way round. Because hey, it's, it's such an odd colour for right. how it reflects the light. It's terrible for covering. I mean, I don't know if that door is a different colour to that panel. Or is it just the fact that the door is obviously straight and the rear panel flares? So, it, it, you know what I mean? That goes out very slightly, yeah. but and you look at it. it can do, because if you look there, yeah. it does the same. And for there, yeah. it's got a mica in it. I mean, the nose cone, everybody says, is a different colour, and it, maybe it is because of plastic. plastic. But again, it's a different angle to the bonnet. <laughs> so it, it, it's, one, it's got a mica metallic in yeah. it. It's a very minute metallic. Yeah. Yeah, it, it's, it nice yeah. Thing, it? <laughs> I'm not one for painting flames down the side, but you, if it's a V8, you've got it. It's yeah. got too many silencers on. <laughs> and uh, obviously, if I just spin that round, Mercedes it is. Just a quick interruption to the video at this point. Glenn would really appreciate any help in getting hold of a set of wiring diagrams for a Mercedes 
SL320 1995 vintage, particularly with reference to door locking mechanisms and the window drop mechanism. If anybody can help, we'd really appreciate it. And Porsches, I think, are another thing Porsche, that you're yeah. into. Uh, I've got an XJC <coughs> in there. Nice. If you want to look at oh, I wouldn't mind a quick peep yeah. if uh, we can afford the time. Let's pop into the inner sanctum for a moment. Wow. Oh, yes. And one of my favourite colours as well. And it come in for a small amount of work. Yeah. It's had patches welded. Yeah. Put patches in. I've got all this to do. Yeah. It's the odd shapes, I guess, that take the time to play with. It's gone a bit warm up. Yeah. British cars always seem to suffer over their headlights and round the headlights. And these are just when they was painted originally. Yeah. <laughs> Beautiful got thing. Spiders. got rust spiders going up everywhere. Wow. I wasn't supposed to go this far. I wasn't supposed to do this bit. <laughs> Not paint the bonnet. But once you've started. Yeah, exactly. They are a very, very attractive shape. I often wonder why there was not more coupes. Uh, they changed them, didn't they? Mm -hmm. I think they've changed the floor pans on the others and then they run out of wow. what they had. Beautiful thing. And what's on your rotisserie? That's a 4356. Wow. I, 1957. Really? Very thin, thin skim of fill. I thought I've got to take yeah. it all off because I never, I never got to it to do it properly. Wow. Oh, -ho! <laughs> what is that? Field marshal. Field marshal. Single cylinder. Wow. Start with a gun cap. So that's one of them boom, boom, boom type uh, engines. One's... Just want to tie you. Yeah. Uh, when this one's done, I've got another orange one. <laughs> I'm known for painting them back to original. Yeah. How they were. Yeah. And people starting to get to know about that. Yeah. And this next one has got to be painted to win competition. Right. So it's no good giving it the super high gloss, no, hard modern finish. Though, yeah. But the rest needs certain amounts of orange peel and yeah. And... To give it that original effect. Won the UK Nationals um, concourse with mm. one I did last year, and then another one I did won the Welsh. Wow. And people Beauty. start to get to know me. <laughs> the next orange one. Wow. You're in the right one. area for picking up this sort of thing, aren't you? <laughs> well, I do this with, with somebody who has a yes. tool. And, uh, Is that a Sprite or a Midget? A Midget, an early one. Mm. <laughs> yeah, I got a lot of projects like that. <laughs> Very hard to photograph bodywork for this sort of video using my GoPro. Uh, I haven't got any specialist lighting or anything else. So, you know, just go with it. But the boot lid, very, very happy with. You can see it's now smooth. The reflected lines show you where it's all nice and smooth. And for me, most importantly, I can't tell where the new paint is in there. That is a real compliment because the sparkle in my paint is quite extreme and the pearl effect is quite extreme. And yeah, happy to say you would not be able to find where that dent was if you didn't know I'd had a dent. And in order to try and lose the joins, Glenn has had to lacquer a good portion of the boot lid right over into the wing. So all this is re-lacquered. And you see it's Looking quite lovely. Then we'll go down to the sill areas. 
and this is the newly repaired sill area and most if not all of the damage was in the stone chip treated area so that meant that matching it was obviously a lot easier in terms of colour. If I'm being hypercritical what I will say is the texture of the stone chip is not the same as the original. It's not a million miles off but you can see the transition. I've lit this from the side to ex um, exaggerate it without that lighting on and uh, without this rather odd angle you really can't see anything but you can see that the original jag um stone chip finish is softer i guess more subtle um whereas the new is slightly sharper but if i get myself back into a normal human's position it's almost invisible because of the angle of the car anyway, it's underneath the car. I'm just going to lift the car to show you this better. So, this gives you a slightly better impression of the area this is how things look right now also note that everywhere in the wheel arch it's been newly under sealed got the right profile here and it's at this stage I should probably tell you what's come out and here is the sizable piece of metal that's been removed. So if we take a look at it, uh, you can see on the underside, there's a little hole, pinhole there. Uh, another one there. Lots of scabbing where the outer surface is gone and just left the underlying metal. Have a hole here, 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 here. And this is where the real harm had occurred, if you like. Obviously in grinding back the paintwork, Glenn has removed some of the metal, but that would have been a doily of metal rather than a gaping hole at the time. So that would fit just there. And another interesting uh, conversation with Glenn is this has a square corner at the end of it. Noting it out as a very early panel because that is the shape that they would normally have a sort of rounded corner or on late cars this tapers down to a bit of a point apparently. So a little bit of pre-production this is that very sharp corner and here you can see the remnants of some seal that would be where this piece the inner wing joined to my sill and as Glenn said again it, it wasn't actually joined as in making contact along there it was just filled with sealer but all original, not been tampered with, so quite interesting to see the early car stuff. So there's a lot of rot, but by no means bad. If you've uh, seen a few other videos of people whose sills needed repair, this would be considered in very good condition for a much newer car. So mine has been leading a bit of a charmed life. So that got cut out and Glenn fabricated new panels to replace the old, welded it in, painted it in and then repainted this area and re-lacquered up and around the arch. Now whilst he was in here what he also did was 
some repairs in this area it's a common area for the cars to have issues the back edge of the chassis rail has a flap of metal over it it's supposed to protect it but it's only really pinned in two or three places and it tends to gape and flap and trap moisture and rubbish and can rot out the back of this chassis member so he's patched that up for me and resealed it so now we're around on the other side They're very similar treatment again the finish on the um, stone chip it's a lumpy part if you like is subtly different to that of the original this is sort of rounded smoothed off this is slightly more aggressive but the transition is very uh, mild you can see what looks like a big color difference here and it's just the way the light catches again it's the palescent and that is true or was true of the original harder to see now because of this blend this was the single blister this is a hole come through and that would have been just there on my car but to get to completely sound metal then has had to take that piece out and again fabricate a whole new piece and they're not easy pieces to fabricate because the sill is a lot more intricate than it appears uh, it's curved out round then we have this crease or styling line here then it's another curve this way and this flange has to follow the whole way around so it's not an easy piece to make so they're the two bits of rust that were taken out of my car and Glenn was also able to get inside this sill section and spray a lot of protectorant and rust preventer inside there for me in order to prevent future issues in that area also noted that i didn't have much in the way of the foam insulation in the sills again probably an early car issue um normally it has to rake out an awful lot of insulation from the sills on x100s because it's going to catch fire if it welds it with that in there and i said there just isn't much in there in mine so early car stuff again So back down on the ground uh, just to break away from this story from a second remember this is not a live video i recorded and edited this so uh, i can't see the chat comments while i'm speaking although i'll be obviously with you guys so uh, if you've not already put your question that's uh, problematical can't be answered i haven't answered you think is a bit challenging in the chat area to the right of this video then do so if you can't see it it might be because you're watching on a tv set um it works better on a pc um sometimes there's a button that says see live chat um you need to click on the right hand side and it's like a column down there but yeah hopefully you're putting some comments in there and some questions so i feel i had quite a lot of work done and i was very pleased that Glenn did the bits that he did and I'm really impressed with both the finished article what I've got um, I'm impressed with the price which I'll come on to in a moment I was impressed with the turnaround now Glenn had the car for rather longer but I think he'd completed the work inside three days um, just the fact that we'd agreed up front but I wasn't fussed about getting the car back early uh, plus I was working away anyway meant he ended up having it maybe eight days something like that so um, yeah relatively a short job quick response a bit of a waiting list but that's to be expected with people who are good at what they do and again I'm going to say that I'm not sponsored nobody sponsors me for anything where I do um, obviously I'm quite pleased with the work I've had done which I paid for so that makes me free to say whatever I think about it and I, I'm really impressed with the value for money and service I got from Glenn so if you're in need of work on your Jag your Mercedes your Porsche 
or your fairground organ. <laughs> and particularly if you're in the East Midlands or Lincolnshire, then I would suggest you beat a track over there, give him a call, email him, have a conversation. Really good, really impressed. On the not sponsored front again, um, just something that's popped into my mind. You'll have noticed I've had a few Top Don products recently. And yes, most of that stuff was sent to me for free. And I am genuinely impressed with that stuff. I would buy it. I think it's really good value for money. They've recently asked me if I'd like to test another product, which is a combined OBD2 scanner and a battery tester. I, I've separate Top Don items that, that I own. Um, I said, yes, I'd be happy to do it. Uh, again, I'm going to say exactly what I want, no veto. And also, because I already have those products, although they've been kind enough to send them to me, I will be giving away an OBD2 scanner because I don't want duplicates uh, in one of my upcoming videos. So if you've not yet subscribed to this channel, then please click the subscribe button and click the notification bell. That will mean that you get some sort of message sent to you when I've got a new video coming out. Yeah, in one of the next videos coming up, I will no doubt be testing that piece of equipment and giving one of them away. It won't be a competition because that would need some sort of license, but I'm going to give one away to one of the subscribers. So subscribe now because A, you'll miss the video if you don't, and B, I will be giving it to a subscriber. So what did it cost? I paid £1,100 plus VAT for all of that work. I think that is really, really good and would encourage me as and when I decide another area of the car needs a little bit of treatment to go straight over to Glen again. Why, why would I try out anything else? Well, I hope you've enjoyed this one. Give you a bit of an insight into body work and costs and what sorts of... Uh, things might need doing to your car. I've got so many things I need to do in and around the garage, but so little time. I'm off to work tomorrow, away for another week. My glove box door is still open because the handles come off, but that's kind of good in that I want to show you how the glove box door works, how to break into it sounds so wrong, but you know what I mean. Sometimes we need to get into things that are locked. Um, I've got the equipment down there to do the gearbox service which I still haven't got round to. I fully intend to try out a set of lowering springs on Purdy. Um, a little bit ambivalent about them if I'm honest because I think it looks a lot better when the cars are lowered but I am not 100% sure about any sacrifices in Jaguarness for ride so uh, a very slight suspension lowering kit will happen but it's very reversible so that's going to be going on you saw the aluminium cooling tower that i've got on the side of the bench in there but now uh, in a few hours i've got left before i've got to pack up and get ready for work i've got to uh, crack on and do a little bit more work on the stairway to nowhere If you're enjoying our channel, then don't forget to subscribe and click the little bell icon so you get notifications of new videos. And please give us a thumbs up or thumbs down and you can share the videos. And below the video is always the area where you can comment and get involved with the chat.